Hello everyone, this is Sharpedo43 once again, bringing you all week 7 of the NGDL. My opponent for this week, or at least for the battle of this week, is going to be the commissioner of the NGDL himself, the killer Nacho, and the Miami Dolphins. Now this is going to be one hell of a heartbreaking battle because one of us in this battle is actually about to get manhandled. And it's either going to be myself and my Mega Sharpedo or it's going to be him and his Porygon Z with Z conversion. Because if he gets Z conversion up, I think he can actually answer the entirety of my team. Whereas if I get some um, prior damage on a lot of his team and then manage to get a few speed boosts with Sharpedo, I'd be able to run house through his team. So yeah, um, this is going to be the team I brought. I'm going to bring, I think, Modest Scarf um, Heliolisk so I can actually, you know, outspeed the majority of his team because I'm confident that um, Modest Scarf outspeeds everything. I brought the typical max defense Skarmory for any physical hitters like Scizor. I brought my Lodic, I think is also max defensive just to take hits from everything else. Actually, no, I think it's Spadef because of the fact that a lot of his team is actually special offensive, especially offensive, whatever. Then I brought Sylveon, which I think is actually a... I think this one is actually the defensive Sylveon. And the Gallade is also just a... I think it's one that has Phytinium Z, if I recall. And the Sharpedo, well, as usual. That's Sharpedo, as usual. And this is going to be the battle, obviously. I mean, I could have explained what, what, what I thought his team would have been, but eh, like I said, I don't really have time for that. So I'm just going to lead off with Heliolisk right here. And he's going to lead off with the Mon I didn't actually want him to lead with, but it makes sense because Electric types actually do answer the majority of my team. And not to mention, my entire draft has no Volt Switch immunity, so as a result, he can just freely switch this in. Now, right out of the right out of the gate, he actually um, gives me some good intel on his Jolteon. It's actually a Choice Scarf one. And I would know because my Heliolisk was also Choice Scarfed. And I was carrying Hidden Power Ground to outspeed it and give it the surprise factor. But he actually got the Volt Switch, so... It's bad that he actually got um, a Switch Advantage here, but it's also good for me because at the same time, I now know that his Jolteon is Scarfed, so now I know better not to let my Sharpedo go down to that Jolteon, obviously. But now it's also kind of problematic because now I have to find out if I can actually get a plus 2 speed with Sharpedo to outspeed Scarfed Jolteon. Either way, he went for Volt Switch into Gudra, and I went for the... I forgot what I went for here. I, oh yeah, I've hit him Power Ground, I switch out, I went into Gallade, took a Fire Punch, and then here he switches in this Claydol, which I go for a knockoff on. And then here I go for Taunt, just to prevent it from trying to set up Stealth Rocks or even Screens, which was for me much more scarier, honestly. Now here he's gonna send out Scizor, and here I kind of predicted him to switch out, which is why I went for another knockoff. So as you can see, I'm making my plays on point right now, so that's actually good. And I knock off his choice band, which is excellent, because I honestly needed to get that off. Now here I'm actually going to hit this thing really, really dang hard with a Phytinium Z, or All Out Pummeling as they call it. Because I wanted to hit this, I, I thought he would go for the um, U-turn, honestly, or the Roost, actually. It was either, one, either the U-turn or the Roost, but I just wanted to get as much damage on this thing. And if it does have Roost, then maybe like taunt it or something. But for now, I just wanted to get damage, and I was hoping this would actually kill, but I guess it didn't KO. And the reason why is because I think the the move that I used this um, Phytinium Z for was uh, Drain Punch. I didn't carry close combat. I thought I can actually abuse um, Gallade Special Defense to hit things that are physically frail, like Greninja, for recovery, basically, via Drain Punch. But it, that didn't happen. Now, here he's going to U-turn and go into Greninja, and I'm going to switch in Sylveon. Risking the possible gunk shot, and I was afraid that this Greninja would be the Protean variety. And but he thankfully goes for the Hidden Power Electric, and I'm gonna switch out Sylveon to see if he actually carries gunk shot. And I go into my, I think physical wall that is my Lodic. If it's not physically defensive, I think it's specially defensive. I don't remember. But he's gonna, he is in fact gonna reveal gunk shot, and I was like, oh crap. And this does over half to my my Lodic, so yeah. Obviously now um. I think what I do here now is um, sack Gallade. Because what I needed was a free switch into something else, honestly. Because now I at least know that this Greninja is also not Scarf, so... 
Although I don't know if he would even run Dual Scarf or if it's necessary for him to run Dual Scarf, but no, I just needed to be sure. Now here he reveals Grass Knot as well, so I was like, holy cranberries, I'm glad I switched out because honestly I did not want my, my Ludwig to go down to this dang Grass Knot. So I do sack Gallade, and I do wear this thing down a little bit with this Life Orb. It's actually good to know that it's Life Orbs. Now here I take the advantage to just send in Sharpedo. Now here what I'm actually going to do is actually try to go for game right here, actually. Because what I'm going to do here is actually... Um, Switch it in, obviously, and I do go for Protect. It fails because he switches in Jolteon. Now here, because I knew that this thing was Scarf because it outsped my Scarf Heliolisk, I'm going to go for a second Protect right here. Now, fun fact, this Sharpedo is actually Adamant and not Jolly like the one I usually carry, so I actually have to... Um... Here, I'm going to now just basically Mega Evolve and hope I can KO it, and I also... For some reason, even though I knew this thing was Scarf, was for some reason thinking this thing would probably be Sash, so I almost didn't want to stay in, but I did stay in, and here I was just going to risk it for the Biscuit and just go for Earthquake. Thankfully, at plus two, I do outspeed this thing, so I'm like, holy cranberries, that's actually really, really good for me. Now, I do take out this Jolteon, which is excellent. I do carry Earthquake. It was specifically for this Jolteon in case Crunch didn't kill, even though I think from my experience, it has KO'd. Uh, Jolteons from full HP would just Crunch alone, so I don't know why I decided to bring Earthquake, honestly. But here now he's gonna bring Gudra and I do have Ice Fang for this Gudra. So it's gonna it, it is gonna KO it in one hit basically, which is actually kinda crazy, like holy cranberries. I thought it would at least live it honestly. But it's Adamant Sharpedo, not Jolly, so maybe Jolly might have lived it, but Adamant, holy cranberries, that's Sharpedo's maximum power right there. But anyways, here he's gonna go into Greninja and I just go for Earthquake because it's neutral and now here according to the killer Nacho, this this um KO on Greninja was actually based on a damage roll, so he could have lived that, and he could have taken out my Sharpedo, but I don't know. That's kind of crazy. Now here, he's going to go into his Claydol, and yeah, that's not going to uh, survive a um, crunch from Adam and Sharpedo, obviously. And um, his last Pokemon Scissor, which was weakened by my Gallade. And that's just gonna die to another crunch. He's not gonna go for bullet punch because he not. It, as you can see, this is basically a, a Mega Sharpedo sweep. Probably one of the biggest of Mega Sharpedo sweeps that I've ever had in my entire Sun and Moon um, career, I guess. I don't know. But um, yeah, Porygon Z from full HP doesn't live Adam and Crunch from Mega Sharpedo. So, holy cranberries. Yeah, we actually win this battle against the um, the Killer Nacho and the Miami Dolphins, 5-0, and and Mega Sharpedo got literally all the KOs in this battle, which is ridiculous. Not gonna lie, well, I do like that I got um a Sharp a Mega Sharpedo sweep. I really did not like that it was they, it would be on my opponent, my uh, the Killer Nacho, because holy cranberries, that really really sucks. I would have liked to have pulled off this kind of um win against someone like maybe um. Oh no. no, actually, you know what, now that I think about it, nah. I was gonna say Sam the Man, but nah, I don't think so. I think with Sam the Man, I already did um, put in a lot of work with Mega Sharpedo. But the fact that I got this off was ridiculous. But honestly, as much as I don't like the outcome of this battle, at least because it would be on the Killer Nacho that this happens, um, I had to do what I had to do, honestly. Because honestly, it was either, this, was, this battle was literally just a do or die kind of battle. Like I either try to sweep him with Mega Sharpedo or he's going to, um, you know, find a way to get um, Porygon Z and then set up. Now, obviously from personal experience with battling the Killer Notch in the past, I know now better not to just let him um, s um, get anything going. So if I have a, ch if I see a chance to win... I'm gonna go for it, even if he finds the battle unappealing. Cause I remember back in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, I would always want to, um, you know, try to um, make battles closer so that the Killer Nacho would upload the battles to YouTube. I, I remember doing that a lot, but um, they sometimes cost me the battle. Like even when I have the battle won, it sometimes just ends up costing me because I try to make the battle closer. So obviously, and in a draft league, oh my goodness. The, the differential is definitely important, so of course I had to make sure that I, one way or another I had to I KO the Killer Nacho. Or not KO the Killer Nacho. <laughs> defeat the Killer Nacho, regardless of the outcome of the battle. So, yeah. It's heartbreaking that I had to um, beat him here with in a, in a Mega Sharpedo Sweep kind of thing. But 
like I said, I couldn't, I can, I couldn't hold back. I, I couldn't because if I did, he would find an opening for that Porygon Z to come in and reverse sweep me, and I did not want that, obviously. But yeah, and not to mention, a lot of my plays had to be on point for this sweep to actually happen, honestly. Had I made a few misplays, it would have been a lot more complicated. So, as soon as I saw all the open windows for my Mega Sharp Peter to come in, I just took advantage and just went in all, all of them. So, yeah. But anyways, I think I've talked way too much here, but it was a short battle, so why, I figure why not. But anyways, that's going to be week 7. Stay tuned for week 8 when that comes, and thank you all for watching this battle. Good games to the Killer Nacho, and... I'll catch you guys in the next battle. So yeah, later.